Hi, this is Angie from Angie's Garden. So, you've decided to keep chickens. That is awesome. You are going to absolutely love it. I'm here today in my chicken run. I'm going to be telling you all about how to take care of chickens, how to start up when you're just beginning. We've been keeping chickens for a few years now. We were start we started from the beginning, we knew nothing. Um, so this is what we've learned. Um, and if you're thinking of getting chickens, there are some really good tips to help you make it as easy as possible. They're such fun, entertaining, rewarding animals, and they have really lovely characters. And of course you get fresh eggs and loads of chicken manure for the garden. A lot of people put off taking care of chickens and having them in the back gardens because they feel like it's going to be a lot of work and they worry about predators but I'm here to tell you that that doesn't need to be the case and you can take care of chickens really easily and keep them safe. In fact you can have healthy happy chickens that are safe from predators and it only need take five minutes a day. Although I guarantee you're going to want to spend more time than that with your beautiful girls. The key to making sure that your chickens are low maintenance is to create the right habitat to start with. It really is worth taking time at the beginning to get it right and you'll reap the rewards for years to come. In this video I'm going to be giving you my three top tips for making the best chicken enclosure possible. Um, how to make it predator proof, how to make it easy to maintain and how to make sure you avoid as many of the problems that you can come across keeping chickens as possible and have healthy, happy girls. Are you happy? You're eating me. So in this video I'm going to tell you how we created a predator proof easy to manage enclosure which is suitable to house your hens right through the year and through avian lockdowns and it only takes us five minutes a day to maintain. I've broken this guide down into three main sections. Creating a safe enclosure, choosing the right house and food and water set up. If you get these right you and your chickens will be stress free. Creating a safe enclosure is the most important thing to consider when you are getting ready to have chickens. You need to keep them safe. Predators are a big threat and will wipe out your little flock overnight. Where we live, our main predators are foxes, badgers and birds of prey. But we've been keeping chickens in this enclosure for a few years now and thankfully we've had no problems. First, you'll need to find an area to build your enclosure. Since we live on a hillside, this was a challenge. I definitely recommend choosing somewhere relatively flat and easily accessible in all weathers. This will make the build easier and tending to your chickens throughout the year as simple as possible. When you are considering the size of your enclosure, I'd suggest you go large. You'll need to fit in the hen house plus at least a square metre per bird. Chicken maths means you'll eventually end up with more birds than you're planning on right now and the more space you can give them, the less problem you'll have with squabbles and bullying. We built our enclosure by sinking large fence posts into the ground with concrete and then connecting them with a wooden frame. We then created walls with layers of chicken wire. Chicken wire is a great material to use as it allows for really good ventilation, plenty of natural light and it also guards against predators, if you fit it right. You must make sure that every part of the run is covered and also I would recommend making the run high enough for you to be able to walk in comfortably as you want to be able to spend time in here without bumping your head. With the chicken wire you want to have as few weak points as possible or even none at all so use the widest lengths of wire you can and overlap them by at least 20 centimetres using cable ties top and bottom to secure the overlap from predator attack. The other way many predators will try to get to your birds is by burrowing under the wire. Some people try to avoid this by laying the bottom layer of chicken wire or mesh 
at 90 degrees running away from the coop and securing it down into the ground or burying it about 30 centimetres deep all around the enclosure. Unfortunately, I have friends who have discovered that neither of these methods are foxproof. To be extra confident that no predators can burrow under and snatch your girls, I would recommend digging a trench all around the enclosure at at least 30 to 40 centimetres deep and burying the bottom layer of chicken wire in concrete. We use post mix as it's easy to use and sets quickly, but remember to also concrete the access points. We created an entry from an old gate, some more wood and some more chicken wire and we concreted the step below. Once you have your structure and wire walls, you'll need to think about the roof. Having a roof over your girls will keep the enclosure from being too wet in the winter and will offer protection from bad weather. It will also help you to meet the requirements during chicken lockdowns. Avian flu is currently a yearly problem and you are likely to be required to keep your birds housed for up to six months each year, usually between November and April. Being housed does not mean that you have to keep them in the hen house, but it does mean that the chickens must be in an enclosure with a roof which no wild birds can enter. You can use tarpaulin or even netting for this, but a more robust material would be corrugated roofing sheets, which we've upgraded to. These are also clear and allow plenty of natural light to come through. If you have any gaps, you could use netting as well. You should now have a generous, robust enclosure that will keep your girls safe and happy. The next thing to consider is the hen house. The house you choose for your hens needs to have a number of features. It needs to be well ventilated, It needs to provide enough perches for the hens to roost on at night. And should also be secure. It will need to have nest boxes and an access point that you can close for the chickens to come in and out of if you wish. The nest boxes should be easy to open and easy to clean out. There are lots of very pretty wooden coops, but after hearing awful stories from friends of red mite infestations, I would recommend choosing a plastic house. We got ours from Solway Recycling and we love it. They make a range of animal enclosures from recycled plastics, which are easy to clean and extremely robust. You need to position your house away from the edge of the enclosure if possible and raise it up on bricks to avoid rats creating a home underneath. There will be no need for fancy automatic door openers because your girls will be perfectly safe in the excellent enclosure you've built. We leave the door to the hen house open all the time. This allows the girls to come and go as they please and makes them calm and happy. Chickens wake up and go to sleep with the sun, so this arrangement also means that we never need to get up early to let them out or rush home for an event to put them to bed. The final thing I'm going to talk about in this video is the food and water set up in your new coop. You want your girls to have constant access to clean food and fresh water, but you don't want it exposed to rodents or need to replace it too regularly. Choosing food and water holders wisely can mean you can just top them up each day. We have a treadle feeder for the food, which holds enough layers pellets for several days. The chickens step on the pedal, which opens the lid. They eat as much as they want and then step off and the lid shuts. They learnt to do this almost immediately once we showed them how it opened. This keeps the food dry and safe from rodents. Sometimes people worry about overfeeding chickens and while I've found my girls will never pass up on kitchen scraps, corn or mealworms, they will only eat as many layers pellets as they need. Chickens digest their food differently to us, so they need small grit or shell available at all times too. We use a small plastic feeder for the purpose and it works really well. Having fresh water is really, really important. We made our water container from a white lidded bucket and some specially made cups from Little Hen Supplies. 
I'll put a link to the companies I mentioned below in the description. It's easy to keep clean and can just be topped up with fresh water each day. The hens really like using the little cups, but they do allow some dirt to be scratched into them, which can be annoying to clean. I've recently been sent an alternative to this drinker, which is this nipple drinker. It has little steel balls at the bottom, which the chickens peck at to get to the water. It seems to be much easier to clean, and I'm hoping that my hens will get used to it and it'll form a really good alternative to the cups. Chickens are really inquisitive and intelligent, so it won't take them long to figure it out, I'm sure. Can you do it? Yeah, that's it. Can you do it? <laughs> Come on. They're all very interested, aren't you girls? That's it, Alice. Can you do it? Clever girl. <gasps> and you, Mary Eggie. Oh, you're showing them what to do, Alice. Once you're all set up, you only really need to come down for about five minutes a day to fill up the food, fill up the water, check over the girls and collect the eggs. I clean out the house about once a week and it takes about 15 minutes just to clear out the old and put in some fresh bedding. And that's it. If you create a robust, safe, easy to manage habitat for your girls, then you can go and pick them up in the confidence that they're going to be happy and it's going to be easy for you to manage. Um, if you have any questions, I will do my very best to answer them. Just put a comment below. Please subscribe and I will share more chicken content in the future. And I really hope that you have a wonderful time on your chicken keeping journey. Bye for now.